G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. From here in uh, not sunny Macclesfield, quite a drizzly afternoon in uh, Macclesfield, England. This is the new uh, base, I guess, for True Footy going forward. In between trips, naturally, I'm going to be residing here, so good to be here. We'll crack straight into a topic that I have been contemplating over the last couple of weeks while I've been on location, and it may be a weird time to make this video after a seven goal win over the West Coast Eagles, as mighty as that victory would have been, but I can't help but look at where the Richmond Footy Club are at in terms of their list position and obviously their ladder position as well, and think, gee, they're in a really, really awkward state. And to be honest, I'm concerned at the direction they're in at the moment, and with the looming prospect of Tasmania entering the league in four or five years' time, I can only really describe where Richmond are at from a list point of view right now as very awkward. So uh, they've just beaten the Eagles at the MCG, probably the easiest possible game that you can possibly have in the AFL right now. Uh, but prior to that, Richmond, of course, lost five games. They currently sit in the bottom four, and that could be third last in the unlikely event that North beats St Kilda, which has taken place by the time you see this video. But to set the scene, last year, they uh, were a finalist. They finished seventh and narrowly lost an elimination final against the Brisbane Lions, who ended up making a prelim. We thought, you know, perhaps they'd had their bounce back. They dipped out of the finals in 21, came back in a big way in 22, and then on top of that, recruited heavily to get two uh, close to A-grade or potentially A-grade midfielders in Toronto and Hopper. They identified that their midfield was weak on paper and absolutely was. The list distribution in that middle-aged tier bracket wasn't great because, you know, they'd been contending for a little while now. So they invested two years worth of draft picks, basically, for Toronto and Hopper. So they spent picks 12, 19, 31, and their first round pick this year as well, which at the moment currently sits at about pick four. Naturally, they gave us the impression they were kind of topping up, you know. Uh, it was kind of a bit of a, both a topping up exercise to improve their list to try and win a flag in the short term. And of course, I think it really balances their list out in a way as well. So I think it's more than simply topping up. I think this was kind of the first step of rebuilding the list in a sustainable way. But I think they did it as a means of trying to smooth out the transition so they don't hit rock bottom. But regardless, they went into this year as the fourth oldest list in the competition, the third most experienced as well. And yet they sit in the bottom four with companies such as West Coast, North Melbourne and Hawthorne right now. Now look, it is round eight or whatever that's just finished. So I'm talking about Richmond as this established bottom four side and they certainly might not be that come the end of the year. They might rise up the ladder. They could even get close to finals. But if the strategy was to load up and improve this team to have one last crack with all their aging veterans, this year in terms of a flag push, it's almost out the window already. We are about to see a huge drop in experience for Richmond, when you consider all the players about to uh, retire, presumably this year, you've got Jack Rewalt and uh, Robbie Tarrant are 34 years old, Cochin's 33, Dusty and Grimes are gonna both be 32 soon. Now, for the most part, they don't really rely on a lot of those names, in particular, Rewalt and Cochin. But you've also got Prestia, who's a great player for him, Tom Lynch, Marley and Pickett's in the side as well. All three of those players will be 31 by the end of the year. So we've got a mix there of gun players who are still playing well deep into their prime. And you've got some players that are, you know, are well past it. But at the end of the day, I've just listed seven or eight players that they're going to still have to replace in their best 22. Now, when assessing the, the next couple of prospective years for a footy club, I think it's good to look at the age bracket of 23 to 27. The, those sort of prime years, yes, there's exceptions. Like I said, Presti is still playing some of the best footy he's ever played. As is Tom Lynch, I think he finished second in the Coleman last year. But we're assessing the medium term prospects of Richmond right now. What I would describe as their core nucleus in that 23 to 27 age bracket, guys like Shy Bolton, Jaden Short, now Taranto and Hopper, Daniel Rioli, Jack Graham, and Noah Bolter. So that is a pretty talented group, I would say. In particular, Shy Bolton for the, the particular type of player he is, he's absolutely A grade and he's a game changer. Jaden Short has been an elite player for a number of years and I think Taranto in particular also has the potential to be that regular A grade player. So I think it's a talented group, but I don't think it's talented enough to be able to cope with a distinct lack of depth, which I think is about to hit Richmond. Part that makes this awkward and difficult for Richmond is that they've traded out their assets in last year's draft and this year's, and this year's, unfortunately for them, is going to be a particularly strong one. If they're given away what could be pick five, pick six at the end of the year, that is a crushing blow. So last year, they only entered the draft at pick 49, took the, just the two picks. In fairness, in 2021, we did see them have a pretty good crack at the draft with Josh Gibkus in pick nine. He's played 18 games. Tom Brown was taken at the end of the first round. He's yet to debut. Tyler Sonzi's played 10 games. Judson Clark's played nine games. And Sam Banks is another player there who is yet to debut. So you've got five players there, one of them top 10, 
and all of them in the top 30. But the part that concerns me about that group of players is the distinct lack of exposure and development they've seen. So Gibkiss has played 18 games, that's great, but two of those players, a former first rounder, is yet to play a game. Now this isn't a blame thing, I'm not close enough to the situation to know if they were injured or if it's just a part of their development. But my point is more looking at where is that growth and improvement going to come from? It's not a massively inspiring group of young prospects, it's certainly unproven. Now it's not as though Richmond have been completely uh, ignorant to the fact that they've got to develop the next younger layer of players there. So some players that they've been exposing have been Tyler Young. He's played six games. We've seen Samson Ryan show some really good signs in his eight games at AFL level. Noah Cumberland's played 15 games. Judson Clark, nine. And Hugo Ralph Smith, he's looked really good at times uh, in his 24 games at AFL level. So as I said, there, there has been some exposure to the younger players, but as a group of players, as a cohort there, it's not the most inspiring talent. Now, I don't mean to be disrespectful to those players on the list. As I said, I'm actually probably a little bit ignorant to how good some of them are. But if you're looking at an evidence-based approach at this, I'm concerned in a couple of years' time when those players are going to have to fill best 22 positions and they're either not quite talented enough or just haven't been exposed enough to this point, which is going to send Richmond off a cliff. Now, as I've said, they've traded out their first round draft pick this year. So what can they do to improve the list? Their hands are a little bit tired. In the absence of an opportunity to grab a real, you know, A-grade talent from the draft, they're going to have to be creative with the way they improve the list. And the reason, I guess, as to why I think there is some urgency about Richmond needing to improve that younger part of the list is the elephant in the room, the Tasmania-shaped elephant in the room that a new club is going to be entering the league within four or five seasons. And we don't have specifics on exactly how that's going to compromise other teams' ability to draft talent. But you can bet your house on the fact that there will be heavily compromised drafts. Maybe less so than in the past, and that's probably a good move. We'll get into that in a whole other video. But teams down the bottom right now need to swing hard at all the talent they can get. And I'm worried about Richmond being held in the lurch here a little bit and more or less ending up in no man's land. So having said all that, how do Richmond try and improve their list this year in the short term to try and mitigate this problem that I've just alluded to? Well, draft picks are out the window. Their best pick is currently pick 35. I think they need to keep that pick. I suppose they could trade it for a, you know, a younger talent at another club, but I think they need to keep that pick 35 uh, because that's their best way of adding young talent to the list. And it is a strong draft, so a pick in the top 40 is still pretty handy. But there's two other creative ways that I think Richmond could improve their list this year. Presumably, despite the fact that they've just recruited Taranto and Hopper on big contracts, they, in theory, must have so much money to play with still when you consider Rebolt, Cochin, and uh, Dylan Grimes are out of contract now. So even if only the former two retire, I'm not too sure about Grimes, he'll still be on a renegotiated contract, so Richmond could save some money that way. So I think Richmond need to hit the free agency market once again in 2023. Some of the interesting prospects for them in terms of free agents I listed were Tom Doday, Lockie Plowman, Mason Redman, Harry Hilmerberg. None of these absolute A-grade talents, but guys that are probably in the right age bracket to improve them both in the short term and in the long term as well. Riley Bonner, Jay Gresham, Toby McLean, uh, some of the bigger names like Ben Mackay and Darcy Parrish, I'm not sure if it's worth Richmond really offering up the huge contract that is likely going to be required to get those players, but it could offer just enough to prize one of the other players that I mentioned loose and come away from this trade period with a slightly improved list and one that will help them in perhaps this unrealistic attempt to push for a flag in the next couple of years before Dusty retires, but also mean they're a better side in three years time when that player is 26. Alternatively, they could look at some underutilized talents coming for cheap at other clubs. And a couple that come to mind, perhaps because I'm an Eagles fan and their West Australian talents, would be Devin Robertson at Brisbane. Surely he's going to find a new club this year. Is he any good? I'm not sure. But you could probably trade him for pick 51. Mitch Georgiadis is also another interesting one as well, who I think has a lot of talent, but he's out of contract. He's been in and out of a good Port Adelaide side this year, and he's just done an ACL. So while I'm hoping that West Coast land a Georgiadis, I'd be looking at someone like that for Richmond as well. Another player that I'll throw out there, just because I'm an Eagles fan, is someone like a Jack Petrocelli, actually. It's hard to pinpoint exactly why, but I can see him playing well in Richmond's system. He's extremely fast. He was a chaos sort of player. He's crafty around goals, but he's been playing in a shithouse team and hasn't really had the opportunity to demonstrate his talent. And he'd almost walk to them for free. He might even get delisted. But a player that I genuinely think could be there in a couple of years to improve this side. So in summary, Richmond have to get very creative to improve their list in the next couple of years with the looming prospect of Tasmania. They need to figure out which direction their list is pointing, to be honest. From an outsider perspective, as a fan of a side that has just had to do this, I think it's time to bite the bullet and try and improve the young parts of their list rather than load up for a premiership while Dusty's there. But with the strategies that I've just suggested, perhaps they could sort of get away with doing both 
for a year or so. With 2023's draft kind of almost out the window for them, they do have a second rounder. They're gonna to have to invest heavily in 2024 and 2025, assuming that 26 and 27 are gonna be the two compromised drafts for Tasmania. Anyway, guys, that was just a bit of a rant about how I see the Richmond Footy Club's list shaping up. I hope that didn't come across as disrespectful. I do like analyzing lists and seeing opportunities for them to improve as well. As always, I do welcome your opinions in the comment section below, whether you're a Richmond fan or whether you're not, let me know what I got right, what I got wrong, and where you disagree, I guess, and and um, perhaps some things that I'm overlooking. Let me know in the comments. As always, guys, I appreciate you. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.